<laughs> Good God Almighty. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, God, we thank you. Not only have you been good to us, but you're good right now. And we want to thank you for right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Really the last part of that verse, but let me just read it in entire verse it sort of pulls it together book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1 New King James rendition I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I want to talk about reasonable worship. Reasonable worship. Reasonable worship. First, first of all, the, the obvious the implication of this text is that what God wants now is not part of us. He wants all of us. Uh, the text says it quite plainly, God does not want a dead sacrifice. God wants a living sacrifice, and it must be holy and acceptable. Secondly, what God wants is not simply a living sacrifice, but that sacrifice must be what Paul calls your reasonable service. The word service in Greek uh, is defined by the words ministry or service or worship. Another translation is that God wants us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable worship. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is interesting because it would not have been necessary for Paul to point out the necessity for reasonable worship were it not for the fact that something was wrong or unreasonable in the worship experience of that first century church. No doubt something was wrong with the worship. No doubt there had come about an improper practice of this thing called worship. Worship was a part of Israel's experience. Was, was it not David who declared, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Worship was the source of Israel's joy. That same David was heard to have said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. But Paul seems to be saying, or he suggests that what God wants is not just worship for the sake of worship. What God really requires and what God really wants now is reasonable worship. Right. Uh, Paul is really saying that God requires logical worship. Worship, or, or God requires worship that is the result of rational activity. God requires worship that is the product of a reasoning, functioning mind, or God requires a worship that is worthy of thinking beings. First of all, real worship must be intelligent worship. Participation in church activities is not enough. Putting up a building to house the church is not enough. Laying down wall-to-wall -wall carpet and putting choirs in robes is not enough. Staying glass windows and pretty lights and organs and 
pianos are not enough. God is not concerned about where you are, but he is concerned about what you are to become and what your relationship is to be with him. Since he is the author of intelligence, since he is all knowing and all powerful and ever present, God does not want anything that is a hit or miss. God doesn't want anything that is less than the best. God wants a logical, rational, intelligent, reasonable worship. Now, this matter of worship has been a a matter of some importance since the church existed. Jesus held a conversation one day with a Samaritan woman at the well. And what they talked about, among other things, was the matter of worship. The woman was concerned about the where of worship. But Jesus was concerned about the quality of worship. The woman was concerned about the place of worship. But Jesus was concerned about the purpose of worship. The bottom line of worship is the spirit by which we come. God requires reasonable worship, which must be measured by its spirit and its truth. Listen, there is value in determining at the outset what real worship is not. First of all, worship is not found in the order of worship. Come on, come on. The worshiper is often unaware of this, but real worship is not to be found in the printed program. Or oh, may, may make no mistake about it. That the order of worship is there to provide that things be done decently and in order. But that is not worship. The worship ought to be ordered and orderly. The devotion says, be still and know that I am God. The call to worship is what Howard Thurman calls the centering moment. That said, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. The reading of the scripture reminds us that the grass will wither and the flower will fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Uh, the songs of Zion are, are designed to take a soul that is caught in the muck and mires of life and lift it to a spiritual high where it can soar, where, where it can float, where it can fly on melodies fit for the eternal. Oh yeah, the offering. The offering is a time for cheerful givers to give as it has been given. Good measure, pressed down and running over. It's the time to bring the tithes and offerings, not because we need to bribe God and to something that he will do, but because we need to thank God for what he's already done. The time of preaching is regarded because Paul says that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them uh, that believe. The claiming of souls is essential because heaven rejoices just when one soul comes home. Oh yeah, yeah, the benediction is necessary because you wouldn't want to stay all this time and then miss out on the final blessing, which leads to the fact that when you leave the worship in the sanctuary, it's time to go out in the world and work. Yeah, 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 yeah even if you have all of these elements of worship, you still may not be engaged in reasonable worship. Real worship is not an isolated experience. We live in an age that says you could be a Christian and not go to church. There are those who have grown up with the misguided notion that 
they can have their own church right where they are. As a result, uh, church attendance is unnecessary. How tragic it must be to be satisfied with a religion based on isolation. I tell you, an isolated Christian is a contradiction in terms. It's not just that Hebrews 10.25 says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. But the Bible says that we cannot be isolated from one another because we need one another. That's why you got to be careful how you treat one another because we need one another. Over and over, the scriptures affir affirm our need for one another. Be the same mind toward one another. Prefer one another. Edify one another. Receive one another. Admonish one another. Care for one another. Greet one another. How many of you went around in worship so you could avoid speaking to certain folks? You took the long way around, serving one another. Bear one another's burdens. Forgive one another. Comfort one another. Exhort one another. Fellowship with one another. Love one another. And by all means, pray for one another. None of these assignments can be done alone. We need one another. And then real worship is not entertainment. It may well be that the great tragedy of the present day church may not come as a result of what Satan did from the outside, but from what we have done in the name of worship from on the inside. Whenever worship is more concerned about exciting content than it is about serious intent, that's entertainment. Whenever worship centers on who's singing and not on who's saved, that's entertainment. Whenever worship has degenerated into a weekly fashion parade, that's entertainment. When the ace to the worship becomes the object of worship, that's entertainment. Whenever people are more concerned about which preacher is preaching than they are about what the preacher has to say, that's entertainment. Whenever the offering is taken up to satisfy the needs of those on the inside, and not a word is said about the need for ministry to those on the outside, that offering is just another way of paying for entertainment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real, real worship is, is not the order of worship. Real, real worship is, is not an isolated experience. Uh, and real worship is not entertainment. Paul says, if that's what you're involved in, it's not enough. Because what God requires is reasonable worship. We've looked at what reasonable worship is not. We must now look at what reasonable worship is or should be. One writer in his book entitled Real Worship suggests that worship occurs whenever we congregate, uh, celebrate, uh, commemorate, uh, communicate, or contemplate. But I'm not satisfied that this really helps you know what Paul means by the phrase reasonable worship. I'm inclined to tell you that reasonable worship is often unreasonable worship. I'm trying to get it. I'm inclined to tell you that reasonable worship is often unreasonable worship. Right, let, let, let me show you. So, so sometimes because of life's circumstances, uh, worship 
becomes unreasonable. Or it's hard to worship when you're battered in bruise. It's hard to worship when your ship has come in and there's nothing on it for you. It's hard to worship when you have given your best and still it looks like the Lord has forgotten all about you. It's hard to worship when the burden is almost more than you can bear. And each day, bitter tears become your cup. Oh, yeah. It's hard to worship when it looks as if God is just not fair. Oh, yeah. Perhaps that, that was the predicament with Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember here God had waited until the sunset years of his life to give him a son. Isaac was Sarah's joy. Abraham's dream. But God says, Abraham, give him up. Yeah. That's unreasonable. Yeah. Abraham, you can't have him any longer. Right. That's unreasonable. Right. Abraham, take now your son, your, your only son, Isaac, and offer him for an offering. Yeah. That's yeah. unreasonable. But the book says, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place in the distance. And Abraham told those who were traveling with him, boy, fellas, y'all stay here. Me and the boy, we are going up to worship. Abraham is on the way to the sacrifice, uh, but Abraham says, I'm on my way to worship. That's unreasonable. Abraham had his son in one hand, a knife to cut his throat in the other hand. And yet, Abraham says, I'm on my way to worship. That's unreasonable. Abraham is one step from seeing everything he had hoped and dreamed for taken away. And yet, Abraham says, I'm on my way to worship, that's unreasonable. I didn't say impossible, unreasonable. I believe the reason Abraham was able to worship was that he knew that God was able to handle the unreasonableness of life. Handle the unreasonableness of life. Very often worship is not working until you understand why you worship, but you worship anyhow. You may not be always to explain, and, 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 and I believe that's what happened to Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah had not planned to worship. But after a while, something on the inside started working. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then worship is not worship. Until you're able to lean and depend on him whom you worship. When you can't understand, worship him. When it doesn't make sense, worship him. When what he asks is more than you have to give, worship him. When you must surrender that for which you will give life itself, worship him. Worship is not a worship until reasonable. Worship is unreasonable. Reasonable worship or the worship with which God is pleased may be similar to the worship of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah went in great detail to describe his experience of reasonable worship. As I said, it was in the year that King Uzziah died. I, I saw also the Lord sitting on the throne. Well, Isaiah, yeah, did, did. I know you, 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 you saw it, but yeah, did, 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 you, did, 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 did you hear anything? But listen to what Isaiah said. Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord. Whenever you have reasonable worship, it allows you 
to see the Lord. You might not see who's sitting next to you. You may not see who's sitting behind you, but you will see the Lord. You might not see the preacher, but you will see the Lord. Well, what else happened, Isaiah? Isaiah's above the temple. So the seraphim, each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. And one cried unto another. And say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. In other words, not only did Isaiah see something, he also heard something. In reasonable worship, you ought to hear something. Paul said, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. When you have experienced an experience of reasonable worship, you ought to go away singing, he speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing. When you have reasonable worship, you ought to go away from this worship experience saying, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my rest. You ever talk to somebody and you can tell they are excited about talking about the goodness of the law and as they go through the process there's a part that they're waiting to get to. Here it is. Can't you see Isaiah standing here before us and he's waiting for us to ask him one more question. He want to say well and let's ask him. Look at him. He's excited. Uh, he's anticipating because when the Lord does something good to you, you just can't keep it to yourself. And Isaiah, he's shouting right now, uh, and he just can't keep it to himself. He's waiting for us to ask him, well, what else happened, Isaiah? Yeah, Isaiah said, the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. Not only did Isaiah see something, not only did Isaiah hear something, but he felt something. Look here. It's not reasonable worship if you don't feel something. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me see if I help you. Let me see. You may not feel like jumping the benches. Yeah, you, you, so you, you, Sunday, you may not even feel like putting one foot in front of the other. But you ought to feel something. You ought to be able to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. You ought to feel the presence of the power of God in your life. Because when he gives you power, he renews your strength. When he gives you power, he'll revive your life. When you, yeah, yeah, when, when you recognize that you feel his presence, he'll put a new song in your mouth. What else happened, Isaiah? I know you saw something. I know you heard something. I know you felt something. But what else happened in this reasonable service? He said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for? See, let me, let me tell you, we, we got a habit of coming to worship and thinking worship is for them. Worship is for the other folks in the church, but worship Good God Almighty. It's, 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 it's individual. Worship. The Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is, is touching your heart. And then he, when he touches, when, when he speaks, he's giving you instructions. You can come and shout up in here until you shout yourself crazy. But unless you go out and be a witness for the Lord, unless you go out and live the life that you sing about, that, that you praise him about, unless you go out and let the world know that I got a savior. Yeah, 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 by all means, praise him in this place. But when you go out, uh, don't lose your joy. When you go out, keep on talking about the goodness of the Lord. When you go out, keep on lifting holy hands. Uh, when you go out, keep on calling him 
by his name. I'm through. But reasonable worship. You ought to see something. Let me tell you what the Lord will, will do for you. And you need to see it in others. I know I'm right. There are times that you have complimented an individual. Pretty hat, a pretty dress, a pretty suit. And you thought it was a new suit. But the individual who's wearing it, say, if you only knew how long I had this outfit, you need to be able to see the favor of God upon others' lives. Because if you see the favor upon God in your life, remember when the Israelites, the generation that, that, that survived, said they, their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out. That's favor. So when you come, you ought, you ought to be able to see the favor of the God uh, in, in others, but also the fact that you know that he has also given you favor. But, but yet you ought to hear something. L -l -l Lord, why am I going through what I'm going to Speak to me, Lord. Give me a word so that I can go out here and do better, so I can go out here and conquer what's ahead. Yeah, yeah Lord, I see it, but let me hear you. And, and, and I tell you, after you see him and after you hear him, you, you, you'll feel Feel something you'll feel like running on you'll feel like moving on you'll feel like there is a better day ahead reasonable worship yeah there, 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 there's you don't shout just to shout you don't shout because somebody else shout when you think about Every time I dig a bit, I, I, can, I, I get myself happy. Every time I think about the goodness of the Lord, I say, oh, I, I just think about it. And then I really don't like to think about it while I'm driving. I, I, it's something I like because I just can't help myself when I think about it. His goodness and his mercy. When I think about it, could have been, should have been dead in my grave. He gave me another chance. When I think about how he spared my life. That's why my, 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 your worship has to be for real. Like somebody said, my worship is for real. I don't know, I'm, I'm through now, but, but maybe even though we come in this group, but yet I might need to get in my own bubble. And sometimes I like I'm just by myself. I say that because we are good at looking at other folks. But that's why you, you, you have to be free in your worship. You got to be free in your praise to God. Because nobody but you and the Lord really know what he's done for you. And he knows when you're not giving him real worship. Uh, he knows when you say one thing and do another, you act like you're grateful, but you don't demonstrate, you, you don't show that you're truly grateful for what the Lord has done. And I know I'm right because you ought to thank him sometime, even though you may not have everything you want, and you're still asking and even begging, and, and, and you, but you're not thanking him for what he's already done. Thank him for what he's already done in your life. Amen. God bless you. Read the poem. Worship. You have to come. Remember I said hit and miss? You got to come. Not because it's your duty to carry on a certain function at church on that Sunday. No, 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 no. I ain't got, I ain't got nothing to do with it. You, you, you ought to come prepared to worship. If what you are doing will not allow you to worship, you may not ought to do it. If ushering at the door 
is going to make you hold your peace. You might not ought to worship. If singing in the choir God, make you hold your peace until you get to your song, you might ought to come and sit out here. You ought to come to worship. And I'm coming to worship, thanking him for what he's already done. My worship is real because of what he did for me one Friday. Died for my sins. But then early Sunday morning, got it with all power. In his hands. Yeah, he's worthy. And that's why I'm going to give him my best worship. My best. And don't, don't, don't call yourself saving enough for Sunday. You, 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 you may not have anything by Sunday. Every day you, you worship him. Uh, and, I, and I tell you, if you worship him and praise him every day from Monday to Tuesday all the way through, I tell you, you have so much joy. You have a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah, that's the first gonna tell you. I, I don't know why you, you why you're so excited. You, you, don't you know what you're going through? Yes, I know what I'm going through, but I know what I'm going through. The God I serve, He's able and He's gonna bring me through. I know He's gonna do it. He's done it before and before and before. That's why He's able. He's able, and I trust Him. God bless you. God keep you. Reasonable and in a simple way, he wants your real, he wants your best worship, your best, your best, your best, your best, your best in your ministry. He wants your best, your best. Yeah, don't, 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 don't shuck and jive. With the Lord at church, he wants your best. And that's why you can't just show up. Don't let a devil trick you. Because if you, I don't know, if, I don't think the devil really got anything to tie you down, but you'll try to blame the devil for tying you down to that bed because, yeah. But just things, we, 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 you got to make an effort sacrifice a reasonable worship. We want our best. God bless you. Maybe there's somebody here who's never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You now you want to give him your very best. I invite you to come as a kind of baptism. I invite you to come as, uh, by letter and or by Christian experience. However the Holy Spirit leads you, we invite you to come now at this time. <laughs> Oh, everybody, oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks to the Lord for all He has done. Oh, give thanks. Thank you.